You, you asking me about my childhood? God. Oh, it was great. It was great. There are several hills right next to where we lived. It's kind of a vacant lot. Then we had we play cowboys and Indians and and uh, or cowboys and bad guys. And my mother would have a, an old broomstick that, you know, I could have had that. I said, what are you going to do with it? I just want to play with it. So I take it. I take it over the hill with guys, and the guys would get their moms sick too. I would be a horse and my steed. So we would start to ride. And I would think, hey, I'm John Wayne. Who are you? I'm Alan Ladd. Who are you? Oh, I'm Hopalong Cassidy. Who are you? So everybody was Roy Rogers or somebody. And we would start shooting each other, and I'm the bad guy, and you're the bad guy. You're dead, you're dead, we got you, we got you. It was make-believe. Our imaginations just ran wild. I had two, two cap pistols. I put them on, and I would pop, 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 pop. And we'd argue about who was dead and who was alive, who was the hero and who wasn't. Superman and Batman and all those, all those superheroes, I loved them. I thought I was one of them. I thought I was them. Then one day I was at a local supermarket and they had the big parking lot. And they, well, hundreds of kids were there, a few black kids, but mostly white kids, but hundreds upon hundreds of kids were there. They had a couple of superheroes. I think Superman came and I think Hopalong Cassidy came, one of those guys. As they went by to shake hands with the kids, you know, I stuck out my hand. He passed me by. He passed me by. He went around me. He went around my hand. He kind of looked at me like I was dirt, like, like he didn't want to touch me. I thought that I was one of them. I was a child. I, I thought that I had an S on my chest. I could fly through the air. I was a kid. I was five, six, seven years old. An impressionable mind. Do you know what that did to me? Do you know how that affected me? It was like a dark cloud. And it never left me. A dark cloud and it never left me. Those are the odds. There are seven to one. Seven, 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 seven whites. I'm an Irish, Italian, Jewish, German. Go on and on. Anglo-Saxon English. Seven whites to every black in the United States of America in the 1860s. How were we supposed to fight that? I ran into a Jewish guy. And he told me, he said, Hey, I understand. I understand your, your frustration. I understand racism. I live it. You wasn't a slave here. You could buy property. You could own things, you could invent things, you could have a business. They couldn't take it away from you. Your inventions weren't listed under your name. They didn't take it and give it to some white guy. You understand racism? You don't understand this racism. Uh, listen. Oh, perfect. 
corporations. The corporations. They control it. They control America, South America, Canada, Europe, Asia, Russia, Africa, everywhere. It's what we buy and what we sell. What we buy and what they sell to us. It's called the gross national product. You've heard of that, right? The gross national product. That's what it's about. That's what they do. They set the rules. And they set the guidelines. And if you don't know that, if you're not aware of it, then you're a puppet. The governments don't control us. The corporations. They run this world. Not the government. Not you. And not I. Think about it. Think about it. Well, let's 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 talk about something I want to talk about, huh? You want you want you ask me what I'd like to talk about? Let's talk about this. You remember that woman who drove her children into a lake. I think she had three children in the back seat and she drove her children into the lake and then she jumped out and, and saved herself. And then there were the two, uh, the couple who embezzled money and then they uh, uh, got caught uh, and uh, taking the money out and they said, they both said, a black man did it. A black man did it. Surprise! Surprise, surprise, surprise! A black man did it. I wonder what my grandfather and great-grandfather and great-great-grandfather, I wonder what they went through. I wonder what kind of justice they got. You know, it used to be white women and they still are, I imagine. But if I had a penny for every white woman who went to sleep with a black man and got caught or exposed and then said she was raped, I'd be a very rich man. You ask me what I think? You ask me how I feel about my people and what happened to them, especially black men in the 40s and 30s and 20s. I want to know where was their due process. I want to know where was their justice. I want to know how many times they were accused wrongly just because they were black. And just because they were black, it was justification to jail them, torture them, hang them without due process. Think about it. You ask me why I do the things I do. Why I feel the way I do. I feel the way I do because there's injustice. There's injustice everywhere. And nobody's gonna understand it. Nobody's gonna correct it. Change will come. You watch and see, change will come. They wanna put me away. They want to put me in jail. They want to, they want to kill me. They're going to kill me. Maybe they should kill me. For every great achievement, there has to be sacrifices. I'm just helping that achievement come quicker. Because the world is horrible. The world is a horrible place. Why do you wait? Or are 
too many of you also members of the club. You don't want to hear that, do you? Well, I don't give a damn because I'm going to die anyway. I'm going to tell you what it is. You're all members of the club. You want to put me in jail? You want to you send me to the gas chamber? You want to put a bullet through my head?